On the eastern shore, chickens outnumber people by as much as a thousand to one. And at Relief Farm in Centerville, it's more like 180,000 to one. But luckily, that one, Queen Anne's County farmer Andrew McLean, is vigilant when it comes to keeping his birds happy, healthy, and disease free. If they just sit there when you come up on them, they're probably not the healthiest chicken. But when you come up on them and they run off, that's a healthy attitude for a chicken. Poultry is a billion dollar industry in Maryland on which thousands of jobs rely. And bird health begins early at the hatchery with vaccinations against some viral respiratory diseases, but not against the industry's worst case scenario, avian influenza or bird flu. The influenza viruses have a habit of uh, changing their genetic makeup, and so you can't have a universal vaccine that works every year. And so the best prevention for livestock, especially for poultry, is biosecurity. Today, Andrew's chickens are getting a checkup, courtesy of Purdue's Director of Veterinary Services, David Shapiro. But first things first. We have very strict biosecurity at the farm door. If you had visited a farm with sick birds, or you came from an area where there are a lot of wild waterfowl, you might not be allowed to even enter the farm. And we have a sign-in log where everyone who enters the farm has to sign in. Including David and us. The sign-in sheet is a biosecurity measure, meaning it helps keep contaminants from entering the farm and potentially infecting the chickens. And it's not the only such measure. You may have to spray the car's tires. And before you enter a house, every person needs to have the proper biosecurity garb. That means shoe coverings, a coverall, and a hairnet. Or if you're Andrew. I wear farm-dedicated clothing, and then I have different shoes in each of the chicken houses. So far, there have been no recorded cases of highly pathogenic avian flu, the kind that wreaks the most havoc, in Maryland, and no cases of the disease being transmitted to humans in the United States. So why all the fuss? Well, for one thing, the virus is highly contagious for poultry, and it has a way of getting around. When a bird has avian flu, it can transmit the virus through aerosol when it coughs or sneezes, and also in its droppings. And it also may be in a uh, wild waterfowl, which may then have droppings around the poultry house, and that could get tracked into the house. Andrew's chickens are organic, so unlike conventional birds, they have access to pasture. However, if avian influenza were to be detected in the area, that's when we would shut the doors and not let the chickens go out because we don't want them to catch it. In 2015, migratory waterfowl brought highly pathogenic bird flu to the West and Midwest. Sometimes 50% of the birds would have been dead within two days of the first bird showing signs, and virtually 100% of the birds in a house would have died within a week. When all was said and done, poultry deaths could be counted in the tens of millions, some from the disease itself, and some euthanized to prevent it from spreading further. So it's no wonder that the industry tests every single flock before it can be moved off farm for processing, or, in this case, to demonstrate the test to any visiting TV crews. When we test for avian influenza, the most common uh, sample is a tracheal or oropharyngeal swab. But David doesn't swab all of the birds. A quick on-farm test using one swab provides temporary peace of mind. And the test line, thankfully, is negative. Before a tube holding exactly 11 swabs can be sent to the Maryland Department of Agriculture's Animal Health Diagnostic Lab in Salisbury. We could probably test between five, 600 samples in an eight-hour period. Here, lab scientists like Bob Robinson run the samples through a test called polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. It actually amplifies the DNA to the point where it can be detected by the, by the actual machine itself. If a sample comes back positive, the farm is placed under immediate quarantine, and after further testing to confirm, the birds are euthanized to prevent spread. And we would sample all the farms within that two-mile radius. If we find any positive samples in the two-mile zone, then we go at six miles. And we just keep going until we don't find it any longer. And it would be very economically devastating to the poultry industry if we ever got it here. But about three hours after arriving at the lab, the sample comes back negative. Thanks in no small part to biosecurity safeguards, mandated testing, and, of course, the vigilance that the state's poultry growers, vets, and lab scientists practice every single day. 
Due to the spread of COVID-19, some poultry processing plants were temporarily closed, which led to production bottlenecks. Some farms even had to euthanize chickens that couldn't be processed in time. Thankfully, the plants did reopen safely, 